Hi everyone, Jill here with hopefully a quick YouTube video. This is not a collaboration. This is my first video I'm just making for the sake of making a video. I've had several requests for how I make my fountain pen girls is what I call them. Um, I love all kinds of water soluble media, but it seems to me my biggest go-to is fountain pen and a watercolor brush. This is this morning's work. Um, my weekend to-do list because this is my if you've been watching my videos this is my journal and my planner all in one and I did this girl sepia is becoming one of my favorite fountain pen colors and I did just random doodling I really didn't have any plan or any purpose and I love this I love her expression I love the looseness um, it's not perfect I just I really like it so I've had several requests and I thought I'd go over some background on me. Um, if you've watched my videos, you've seen everything in my current journals from the last couple months and how often I do these watercolor and fountain pen girls. It's often, it's become my go-to, but it wasn't always that way. I would say I started, look at these three. I started in January of 2016. Look at these three binders of 9 by 12s These are things that are not in any journals. They're just 9 by 12 sheets. And I started in January of 2016, let's see, with this one. And I do all kinds of different art. I do mixed media. I've taken a lot of lessons from Christy Sobolewski. Um, and I hadn't done art in years. I was heavily into art in high school. Um, I was supposed to go to college for art, didn't got married, that marriage ended, <laughs> long story. Years later, I started picking up mixed media, but I had not done faces. And I wanna show you here my first face in years and years and years. I don't know how the glare is gonna work on the plastic. But this was after watching Christy Sobolewski with colored pencil and white acrylic ink on top. So I did this one and by me, you know, she was no means perfect, but I, I was hooked. My second face <laughs> was this one. Now these are faces that are not part of lessons. Many of these others, I'm not gonna do a journal flip. Many of these others were part of lessons from Christie's classes, such as these, and they're gorgeous. Um, but that was following Christy step by step. Christy, you'll, if you're watching this, you'll recognize a lot of these old lessons. Aren't they fabulous? Oh, this is not lessons. So anyway, I don't want this to be a journal flip. Out of this whole binder, there was only one or two uh, where I started way back here with fountain pen, my fountain pen girls. I would say this was the beginning of it, March of 2017. This is a Jane Davenport black fountain pen and a little bit of pink watercolor. Although, look at this girl. Isn't she fabulous and mod? Look, I went through a whole series of, of this kind of girl. Um, and that's it for this whole binder I only had one watercolor uh, fountain pen girl as I call it my next journal would be no nope, not that one this one um, so this started uh, this was February uh, March April of 2017 and this girl is fountain pen again with a little bit of watercolor wash not much though but you'll see now here's the black fountain pen with paper piecing here's the black fountain pen over top of acrylic ink these rings and marks are acrylic ink but this girl is all done and this is when I started saying hmm this is what I really like let me show you how often I did this uh, see once again in this binder it was not very much all the way back here Okay, this girl was taken from a reference image um, in a fashion magazine. She's all black fountain pen and ink and doodles. Um, this girl, again, black fountain pen, fashion magazine. This is fountain pen, but there's some gouache, obviously, on top of that. And pretty much in this binder, that's it. So you can see, so out of these two whole binders, I only had a few fountain pen works then this one which starts 2017 you'll see a lot i did this girl 
in a turquoise. I did these two curls, sepia, and look her funky hair, but it was a good experiment. Uh, this girl is all fountain pen. This girl is all fountain pen. These other ones are a lot of water-soluble material as well. Here's two fountain pen, um, black and multicolor. This flower ended up way too big, but I love her eyes and her mouth, so it was certainly worth doing. Uh, that's mermaid markers. Here's two more fountain pen, all in purple, and some blue, I believe, mixed in. Uh, fountain pen and jelly roll pen and fountain pens, red and black. Uh, this is watercolor. Uh, there's some fountain pen in this and some watercolor. This is all, all fountain pen. Turquoise and sepia. Isn't she beautiful? Uh, fountain, no, no, that's... That's some other pens. Um, here, she's all fountain pen. So you can see, all of a sudden, it's picking up. This is becoming my go-to fountain pen. And that's a red fountain pen. This one is Stabilo All. All Stabilo All pencils. Uh, let's see. I don't want to get too tedious here. Fountain pen. Once again, all Stabilo All. But it's funny. Stabilo All and fountain pen are almost the same technique. Um, I could show you that later and that's it so and now if you watch my journal videos you'll see I very very often do the fountain pen girls so let's get started um, I want to bring my brushes my water so you can see how much water I'm using and how much I'm drying off my brush because that's important um, although I'm going to have to stop and make sure that this is in the camera. I'll be right back. Okay, I wanted to, I'm back. I wanted to make sure that my water glass and my towel are in the picture because I know other people have told me they find it tedious um, to watch every little detail. But to me, it's critical to watch teachers and how much water they keep in their brush because it matters. It makes a difference how much we're drying off, how much we're keeping, um, especially with this kind of art. So, I here are my fountain pens. These are all my Jane Davenport's. I have one preppy. Um, this is my travel case of my most important art supplies, by the way. This side has different jelly rolls, a rollerball pen, a stump, my Stabilo All pencils, and my Lamy fountain pen. So, what color am I going to do today? I, I'm i going to stick to basic black. Black is my favorite. So let's start with black. Who knows where this will go. So, if you haven't seen my other videos, the fountain pens I rely on the most have cartridges. Let's check the cartridges, see how much... Oh, looks like... Oh, I might... Oh, it looks like I have enough ink in there. Sometimes it needs to be shaken down into the tip, as you could see. Never shake it over your picture. So, I try to use no pencil a lot. Um, I don't know if I should shoot for doing one big face here or multiple. Let's do multiple faces in different colors. So let me just start. When you start with no pencil, when I start with no pencil, I have to accept my mistakes. And I like to work quickly uh, without too much thought. I'm just going to have her looking over to the side a little bit. I just loosely go in. I, I almost always start with the eyes. It's just the way it is. Um, and you can see it's scribbly is the best way I can describe it. Now her eyes don't look like they're looking in the same direction. But we'll see how. Maybe rounding off that side will help. Okay, we'll give her an eye crease. The beauty of doing this this way is if it doesn't turn out, you don't have to see the video. So I can be loose and free and not worry this doesn't have to be a masterpiece. It doesn't have to be a work of art. Okay. So. 
I'm seeing if her eyes. I probably should have gone straight up and down. Um, let's just do a really simple nose. Around, two nostrils. Okay, we're going to keep this nice and simple. A little. Now, her lip line. Uh, is that straight? Let me do this. There's her eyes, her nose, her mouth. Okay. Bring this side up a little more. Now I have to real quick decide. I think I'll keep the shadowing heavier on this side of the face. Um, decide where my light source is. I don't, I don't strictly adhere to that. I kind of wing it. Not everything is accurate for sure especially when I'm not using a reference photo. So there's the shape of her chin. We'll give her a nice little round face. Now you can see that side is much wider, but I can bring it in. Water will forgive a lot, not everything. I can't say it'll forgive everything. Mm, there's something about the shape of that top of the eye. Okay. What do you think? Let's see. Put her neck. Now, I don't always put the hair on right away. Let's give her some ears. Let's just give her a, a, a hint of an ear. All right, I'm going to go with simple hair. Let's just... Make some simple lines. Some simple lines on this side. I'm gonna bring her hair in tighter since she's leaning her head over this way. I figure her hair will fall down here. Now, this hair is all gonna be much darker. It's behind. I'm going to add lots of ink in here. You'll see, I, I hope I'm not mumbling. I'm talking kind of quietly to myself as I go. Okay, she's got a little bit of dark back here. Now, it's very quick, very sketchy. We wanted more, I said more shadows on this side, right? So I'm going to add some more ink in here. Let me add some ink in here, some ink down here, the shadow under her chin. Now don't worry, we add a first layer of ink and then go in with some water and then you can add ink back in. What am I going to do with her dress? Let's keep it simple. Dress, shirt, I don't know which it's going to be. Here. She's got a little bit of a collarbone. Okay. Nothing fancy, right? You look at this and you're like, oh, it's just a sketch. It's a sketch with an ink pen. Um, I have done a lot of sketch work with ballpoint pens, which is really good practice, but a ballpoint pen doesn't really um, activate the way these pens do. I can tell you right now, she's got a lot more white space here than here, so let's bring that in a little. And bring this one out a little. Let's add some more dark here under this side of the nose and this side of the chin. Okay, now comes the fun part. Cap my pen. If I had to live with three watercolor brushes, these would be my three. This is a quill, uh, size 120. I wouldn't mind getting a smaller one of this. This holds a lot of water, and yet uh, it's got a pretty fine tip. You can do some details. 
I rarely use this with my fountain pen girls. It holds way too much water and you'll find if you experiment, if you add too much water, your ink just bleeds out in a big feather. But sometimes that's an interesting effect. These are my two go-tos. This is a size 12 with a tip. I can do the entire thing with this one. I very rarely go down to this little one, but if I need some details, this is a size four, I might go down to that one. So for today, I have a black fountain pen, I have some fresh water, a towel, and a size 12 brush. So now I'm gonna wet my brush. And I don't wanna start with too much water, although the first time you wet, it's hard to get water deep down inside your brush. You gotta really, really wet. Okay, dab off on the towel. Where to start? Let me start on the lighter side of her face. I'm just going to take the wet brush, working very quickly. I have to work quick. Uh, it dries quickly. It sinks into the paper quickly. Uh, here's her ear. I, I don't know. I don't know how much I can talk during this part. Oh, see? Now, see, there's a mistake. Her shadow is supposed to be on the other side. Let's see if I can lift it off. Wet, dry, 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 lift. Yep. See, you can lift a pretty lot off. Smooth it out. I don't know how well I'm going to be able to teach this as much as just plain show it. I like hard edges at times. I like loose, messy. This is not a watercolor where I'm making a smooth watercolor face. This is, this is what I do for fun. This is what I do for more like expressionism or impressionism I don't know what it's called this was just a good time to go down in here and get this dark there is no rhyme or reason to where I go on a painting and when uh, it's different every time see I started with one eye worked down the side of her face ended up in her hair go figure now I'm gonna do this darker side of her face. You wanted more shadow on this side. So let's, I love this brush. You can get a fine tip, you can get a wide swatch. Now this is the side I wanted to bring the shadow down. Now my brush is getting dry. See, it? It's, it's hard to get it to move around. But look, I can smooth that out. I can go back, make the roundness of her face. Let's go down here and get the shadow of her chin. What do you think? Is it making sense how I do this? Now, you're seeing some harsh lines. Some um, pen marks are still showing. I'm okay with that. You may not like that, and if that's not for you, then this is not what you're going to want to do. Let me clean my brush, dry it off, see if I can lift up a little bit of that in the white of her eye, smooth it out. Some places, oh, I missed her ear. Some places I worry about smooth, and other places I love it messy. Uh, a little too much ink there so you see I clean off my brush lift it back up still too much ink I would have liked that part of her mouth to be left white let me see if I can smooth out this under the chin you got to be careful not to work the paper too much you start getting um, peeling up your paper let's see this side of the nose should probably be all dark now at times you're washing out too much of your lines don't worry you can go back in with your pen you can add more let's see if I can smooth this out some I don't know I love collarbone marks but without a reference image I don't know if I'm getting those exactly right so I hope you can still see in the camera how much I'm blotting off my brush. Uh, I want to do a sample somewhere on this picture. 
to show you what happens if I flood it with the brush. Well, that's a pretty good example right there. If I flood it with the brush, see how it starts pooling, feathering, but that's a good look for down there. I don't mind that at all. Let's see if I flood the brush over here, what's going to happen? Now that's a puddle of water. Can you see it pooling? But then I can drag it out, which sometimes makes a really nice soft background effect. So she blends in with her background. Now see all that feathering there? That's tons of water. If you don't like that, don't use tons of water. Um, I most of the time use it somewhat. Now over here, see the difference? The dry brushing, you see a lot more of your strokes. But since I feathered this background out, I want to feather this background out some more too. You'll find the fountain pens dry really quickly. Except, now see, there's a big, what do you call that? Bloom. If anybody does watercolor, you'll know where the bloom is. Some people hate blooms, some people like blooms. I'm going to leave that bloom there since this is kind of instructional. I'm not liking here under her chin. I think I dug in too much with the pen, but I think I can go back in and fix that. I'm going to pause here, make sure it's completely dry so I can, so I can show you the next step. I'll be back. Okay, I'm back. I dried it with a heat gun. I never, very rarely use my heat gun. Most of this work in this journal is done down on the sofa in the morning before work or at night watching TV or even at my cubicle at work on my lunch hour or my morning hour when I get to work early. Um, most of the time this fountain pen dries quickly enough that I can go back in. Now, so far I've only used the one brush, right? Not bad. And uh, now it's dry enough you can go back in. My second layer I very rarely wet again. I go back in, I darken up let me darken up her pupils, the eye line, maybe add a little to the eyebrow. Here, darken up this pupil, her eye line, this eyebrow. See how it just pops back out what you may have diluted too much? Nostrils always should be dark. Oh, you know what? Look at that. I missed the, what is it, the fulcrum, the little, let me, mm, wet, dry, soften that up. I totally missed that. I didn't even see it till I came back in. You can still see my lines a little bit, but that's all right. And while I'm here with a wet brush, let me smooth out the top of this lip. That's just a little too rough. Now her lips are wet again. <laughs> it's the way it goes. It's back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Um, so I'll have to let that mouth dry a little bit. Let me add, I like a dark area right here under the ear and along her neck. I'll add some more in there. Well, oh, that might be a little too much. Everything is one grand experiment, right? I didn't come on here today to make a YouTube video and show you a masterpiece. I came to show you how I do it. I'm adding some more dark back in here. A little dark under this ear. Well, I think we need, definitely need some more dark along this side. And you know how you work layers in mixed media? Well, here you're getting some layers. You've got some background soft layers, some foreground details. You decide how much is enough, how much is too little. A little accent there on the side of her dress. I think she needs more in here. Now you can 
go in and re-wet. I don't know why, I just rarely do. I think she's pretty, well, okay, see? Now her mouth is, I can feel it's rough. I've damaged the paper a little bit. Her mouth is dry enough that I can go back in and firm up just a few places. This half circle in her chin is probably too much. Now, see here? I think she needs more shadow here. I had to be careful. Um, I'm going to go back and add some black. And this one part, I am probably going to go back and re-wet again. I want this nice and deep and dark. Let's see what happens. Like I said, it's one big grand experiment. Wet my brush. Not a lot of water. I don't want to flood it. Yep, look at that, look at the difference that makes. I can take some of that black, add it in here, add it in here. Now I'm damaging the paper there. See, I probably shouldn't have re-wet it. It's okay, it's only my journal. This is not a great big piece of art to be selling <laughs> or to live for posterity. This is my journal. So what do you think? I think oh, there's a little bit of white left up here. I should blend that in. I think she has a pretty expression. I think she's loose. You can see my scratch marks, my pen marks. And yes, I damaged the paper, but this is what I like. This is my go-to. I could do this every day. And how long did that take me? Not very long at all. So now we want to do something in the background. I don't know what. It could be a stencil. My stencils are put away. Um, how about I just grab something simple like a ruler? Let me move my water and my towel and get my pen. And here's just a plain old ruler. Let's make some lines. Okay. Uh, look, I hadn't planned this at all. This is totally spontaneous. Let's just... You just want something behind her, right? You could do the same thing with a simple stencil. You can do the same thing with doodling. Um, okay, that's pretty cool. Do I want to go? Let's go this way too. Okay. I don't think I have anything like this anywhere in my journal. Now see that line petered out, but that's okay. Uh, let's add one more over here to tie it in. Her hair blends out into nothingness, so, okay. My ruler, bring back my water. I put my cap on my pen. I try and keep my caps on. For this video, I've been leaving it uncapped a little bit, but to save the ink. So, now we have a background. I'm going to get my brush back out, wet it, dry, 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 and let's soften up some of these lines. I have no idea what it's going to look like or what it's supposed to be, but I'm just going to move some of the ink around. Soften where they disappear into her hair. dry. Okay, she's looking interesting, isn't she? I don't want to I don't want a definite cutoff where the lines end and her hair starts. I want it to look like you're not sure which is which or where it begins and ends. Okay. I'm going to make sure my brush is clean. Somewhat dried off. This line is too harsh. I want to soften it. 
Okay. I sure hope that's still in the camera view. So, where do I go from here? I can do some journaling down here. I do a, um, a lot of, if you've watched my videos, a lot of this scribble journal where nobody knows what it is I'm writing. And especially since I'm putting it on YouTube, I don't want my innermost thoughts out there for the world to see. I could doodle down here. I could put flowers down here. This could be a field of flowers. Um, I'm not sure. Maybe I should change colors. Let's do something with another color. What color do you want me to use? Um, how about red? I love black and red. Or black and pink. Let's see how much is in my red. Oh, red's empty. All right, I'm going to stop the video uh, in case I need to edit. I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. I'm really winning it today. I didn't have any of this planned. As you saw, I opened up my red and my cartridge was empty. So what I decided to do, I was lazy. I did not clean my pen. I took the red cartridge out. I threw it away. This is a refillable cartridge. So I put it in. I opened up this Lamy ink. I bought a Lamy pretty fuchsia red ink. You dip the pen all the way in the ink. You slide the slider up and see how it pulls the ink up into the cartridge. You pull the ink up into the cartridge and then you wipe the ink off with this towel because you had to dip that whole tip into the ink to fill it up. Let's see how this works. This is a total experiment. I haven't really had any practice with these refillable cartridges, but I got this new Lamy ink and I'm interested to see what this fuchsia looks like. So you can try it along with me. So bring my book back over and get rid of that towel. Don't need that. So what am I going to put down here? Mm, let's start with, I feel the need to continue some of these lines maybe. So here's a red line continued from that one. We'll do one this way. We kind of won't know where the lines start and stop. <laughs> I don't often make it up as I go along on video. But like I said, I can always throw this video out. I don't have to use it. Okay. So there's some lines with the ruler. And how about, I love doodling flowers. Doesn't everybody love doodling flowers? Now, since I didn't clean my red out, I was afraid I'd get a lot of red ink, but this is looking pretty pink. Let's do one here. I'm gonna try and, oh, that didn't end up very well. I don't, I don't often doodle on camera. I'm interested to see what this ink looks like when I activate it with water. The Noodler's ink I tried, the Sunrise, really changed color differently. Noodler's ink is an ink made in the US where this Lamy ink is made in Germany. Um, and the Sunrise ink went from an orange gold to a neon yellow. So let's see what this, I can't remember what this ink is called. Um, is it on the bottle? Make sure it's shut. No, it's not on the bottle. It must be on the box. It must be on the box somewhere. Um, one, two, three, four, five. Let's put a big flower here. Well, all I can say is a couple people have asked for process videos, not just journal flips. So this is my process. <laughs> I hope, I hope it's okay. So now I, my not so fancy labels, I put a piece of masking tape on this and this one's labeled red. So now I don't have a red. I only have P 
think I'll have to relabel that and then see what I want to do about a red pen. So now let me make sure my brush is all clean. There's no black left in it. Dry off a lot of the water and let's see what happens. Um, little going to need a little more water than that. It's not activating quite as easily as the black. I don't know where I'm going with this. I guess I'm just kind of activating behind the flowers and a little bit in the centers. Remember, you can always go back in and add more line work. Not much to say at this part. I'm just activating the ink, moving it around. I'm probably going to have to bring some pink up to tie it in somehow. A little bit in the center for some depth. Maybe I'll bring some black down and put black in the centers of the flowers. I don't know. Uh, this is, nothing's accurate. I'm just moving around, hitting parts randomly, uh, not completely even. To me, that's the beauty of it. It's a little more water there. If I get too fussy, I end up not feeling it. Now I'm tempted to put a little pink into her cheeks. Oh, this is scary. I don't want to ruin it. Let me grab a little bit of pink off of here with a wet brush. You can grab it right off of the nib of your pen. Let's see how much is on there. Oh, oh not bad at all. Not bad at all. Now I'm going to clean my brush, dry it off so I can soften the edges. Okay, she needs a little more pink up there, so it's not just her cheeks, a little bit in her chin. Oop. It's hard to tell how much you're getting off the brush, a little bit on her nose. I hope I didn't add too much water there and make some blooms. Okay. How about a little pink in her dress? See, now I'm going to get carried away. A little pink in her dress. Now I need a little black down here. Clean the pink out of my brush. Get my black pen back out. Let's put... Some doodles in the centers of the flowers. And let's see. Today is five, six, eighteen. Winging it for a YouTube video. What do you think? Okay, I'm going to call that a page. I could keep going. I could keep doodling in the squares. But you know what? I like that as it is. She might have a little too much pink in her cheeks. 
Um, but I wanted to demonstrate two different colors at least. And hopefully, I'm going to make this year a little darker as well. <laughs> hopefully this won't be, you could go back and keep messing and messing and messing with it. But I find it's better to stop. Just stop and leave it at that. Let me know what you think. Um, was this helpful? Um, does it inspire you to try it? Uh, would you like to see more with different colors? Uh, what would you like? Let me know. Um, thanks for watching and thanks for letting me share my art.